Here. There he is! Oh my goodness, thank you, Alderman, for bringing up the second. I appreciate you being here tremendously. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, all right, we're we'll hold up. We're going to do that? Okay. So we'd like to start the, par uh, start the parade. You hear this? You hear this? <clears throat> we'd like to start the festivities uh, prior to our national anthems, though. But we'd like to pay uh, tribute to a young man, um, a, a man who has passed. But he is... Uh, um, an icon, will continue to be an icon, has been an icon in our community, sorely missed. And uh, please direct your attention to our video wall for our special salute. It wasn't a Columbus Day Parade broadcast without this encyclopedia of Chicago Italian history and achievements. Elegant, kind, and larger than life, Dominic DeFrisco was born in 1933 in the Bronx to parents who emigrated from Orleans, Sicily. His career in public relations took him from New York to Chicago where his love affair for the city began. You could ask Dominic, and Dominic would do his very best to deepen the friendship by responding to your requests. And he felt good when he was assisting others. DeFrisco helped resurrect Little Italy, Shrine of Our Lady of Pompeii. He was President Emeritus of the Joint Civic Committee of Italian Americans and well known for creating and hosting his annual Dante Awards, an honor given to Chicago journalists. When he spoke, he had a talent with words, a majestic talent with words. That was awe-inspiring. He wanted the Italians to be known for what we are, what we are in our hearts, and that's family, food, art, culture, music, sports, and bringing people together at the table. DeFrisco cared about people. He insisted on inclusion of other ethnic groups and Jewish Holocaust victims in Chicago's Columbus Day Parade. Being able to hold his hand and share his sunset years with him as he bestowed so much knowledge and wisdom and, and just true bonding with me is the most special experience I've ever been through. DeFrisco was honored for his truth more times than one can remember. He has an intersection named for him and a booth, okay, an office, at Gina Giorgetti's where he held court. Dominic was backbone in the spine of the Italian American community. A round of applause, Mr. Dominic DeFrisco. We are joined by his daughter, Nina Mariano, and his lovely bride, Ms. Carol Laverde. Carol, where are you? There she is right here. Thank you for being with us, dear. Okay, we are gonna be begin our festivities. If I can ask R Carol behind you, everybody right here, we have the posting of the colors. So please, uh, the camera guy, if you're gonna, you can stay right there if you want. Uh, just move your, move your stuff over, please. Thank you. Sorry. Yes, everybody step right back here. Thank you so much. Do you need a hand, Pat? Would somebody help this young man, please? Thank you. Sorry, Pat. Glad to see you're feeling well again, buddy. <clears throat> Best seat in the house, right there. We did this for you because you couldn't see. <laughs> He's got the chair right there. Okay, we'd like to welcome uh, American Legion Post 974 to post the colors. We ask those to remove your hats. <clears throat>
Fratelli d'Italia, l'Italia se desta dell'emo di Scipio se cinta la testa dove la vittoria le porga la chioma che schiava di Roma e Dio la creò. Fratelli d'Italia, l'Italia se desta, te le modiscipio, se cinta la testa, dove la vittoria, le borga la chioma, che schiava di Roma, e Dio la creò. Stringiam ciacco vuorte, sem pronti alla morte, sem pronti alla morte, Italia chiamò. Stringiam ciacco vuorte, sem pronti alla morte, sem pronti alla morte, Italia chiamò. Sì! That was Jack Mucio, and now for the American National Anthem is Gabriella Rego. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave thank you so much Gabriella you know, if you'd like to show your pride and uh, need flags or masks, uh, red, white, and green masks, or the car, uh, ma uh, car flags, the Joint Civic Committee is selling them right under that tent, so you want to stop over there. So happy Columbus Day, everybody. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm Ron Onesti, President of the National Italian American Sports Hall of Fame and a Vice President of the Joint Civic Committee of Italian Americans, the organization that has produced the Columbus Day Parade since its inception in 1952. Today is a day that is a long time coming. There have been many who have come together, especially in these last few months, with so much passion and so much pride with one common goal, to foster our culture that has been traditionally celebrated annually on this federal holiday, despite efforts to take it away from us. We'd like to retire the colors. Color guard, stand cut. Single file on me. Forward, march. How about a round of applause for our flag and for our, our friends from the American Legion? You know, so many people here today in this piazza 
are from this neighborhood. <laughs> Want to recognize them, of course. My grandparents arrived to Taylor Street by way of Ellis Island in 1911. It is in their memory and in their honor I stand here before you today. We are a proud people, the same as all the other ethnic groups that make up this great city and this great country. For almost 70 years, the Italian American community has celebrated with a grand parade, one of the largest in the country. But due to COVID, we must wait until next year, hopefully. And who was in that parade? Great businesses began by people and, and dogs were, <laughs> great dogs. Canine Americans were in this, okay. Italian dogs. Italian dogs. <laughs> I have to be one of them. Okay, let's get back. Um, the Italian community has celebrated with a grand parade, and this is one of the largest in the country, of course. Once again, who was in this parade? Great grand businesses began by people from Italy that have realized their American dream. There were political figures who recognized the importance of honoring the Italian American community on their day. There were war veterans and first responders who not only showed their support, but also honored those Italian Americans who gave the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty or at war. Practically every Italian and Italian American organization was represented, proudly marching with their banners like they are today. Whether it was a group honoring a particular saint, a town in Italy, or a professional or social group. There were bands, the best marching bands around, from schools with students of all ethnicities. Then there were the children, all with beautiful smiles, new outfits and flags to wave, riding on grand parade floats made of paper and plastic. They were there to join their families, learning about where they came from and what it truly means to be Italian. And every year, especially last year in 2019, all ethnic groups were invited to participate in our grand event. We were proud to welcome over 15 other ethnic groups marching proudly in the costume and colors of their culture. And we welcome them all now to join us to talk through our differences if they exist and arrive at a peaceful resolve. There have been recent actions in an effort to replace Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. We welcome Indigenous people. We want you to have your day. We will march with you, arm in arm, celebrate with you, mourn with you. We just do not believe the day that celebrates your culture needs to come with it a price tag and at the expense of our federal holiday. This is a very important holiday to us all. I'll give you my own personal connection. I was a Columbus Day Queen Escort back in the day for the contest. My wife went to be was a Columbus Day Queen contestant. We met at the contest. Our first date was the parade. We got married on Columbus Day. I would tell my friends, no, it's not Monday, it's Columbus Day. After the ceremony in church, we hopped on a trolley and got to the parade just in time to board a float specially made to resemble a wedding cake. Unfortunately, they all thought we were Tony and Tina, but for the most part, <laughs> it's true. I love your show. What are you talking about? But this is just one example of how this holiday has been so important to so, much, to so many. Recently, History has been challenged. Our history has been challenged. We welcome the opportunity to discuss actions that have happened 500 years ago through today. But what we cannot accept is disrespect to our community. To be dictated to on who or what should be our icons is unacceptable, as it would be to any other ethnic group. In 1966, State Representative Victor Arrigo rescued a great statue of Christopher Columbus that lay in storage once again. It was built in 1892 and prominently displayed in the Italian pavilion of the 1893 Columbian Exposition World's Fair in Chicago. So it has historic relevance as well. You're standing right now in Columbus Plaza. This was named. There's a plaque that says Columbus Plaza. The north wall represents the force of the wind. 
This is all a sculpt part of the sculpture. Onyx inserts represents the force of the waves in the second wall. The third wall, this one here, represents the sail of Columbus's ships. These remain, but the statue is obviously gone. Now in its place are tributes. Look at them. These are just a few of the practically countless Italian Americans who have contributed to all walks of life in this country. We are keeping it positive, but that does not mean we are giving in. You may take our statue, but you will not, neither destroy our faith nor harm our spirit. So today marks a new beginning. The moment is now for us Italian Americans to come together, unified, proud, and strong. Today is the day that we proclaim who we are. And it is wonderful to see that we are not alone, as many other ethnic groups have shown their support of our plight and are willing to march by our side. So let's show our pride, fly our colors, flood social media, and show our elected officials that we mean business. <laughs> Support the many Italian American organizations and businesses that we have. Let's do our talking at the polls. We have so much to be proud of, so much positive within our community. Let's place our focus on that. Let's always be proud. Let's always be positive. God bless you. I said, God bless you. I said, God bless your families. May you stay safe and healthy always, and may the green, white, and red that flows through our veins give us the strength to emerge victorious in our fight to be heard. At this time, I'd like to bring to the podium, a leader in our community, a young man who's really proven himself as leadership. We're so grateful that he took the position as president of the Joint Civic Committee of Italian Americans. Please welcome Mr. Sergio Giangrande. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to make this quick since we have a number of speakers we'd like you guys to hear. First, I would like to applaud the group that has been here every Sunday at this statue showing their support for Columbus and the Italian-American heritage. You guys have been fantastic. I also want to thank the men and women of the Chicago Police Department who stood and fought to, fought to protect our statue. Some of those officers were hurt during that attack. We want you to know that our prayers were always with you. The Italian community appreciates and honors what you do for us. I want the community to know and make this clear. We did not cancel the parade due to civil unrest. The city of Chicago canceled all parades in 2020. I'm blessed to be up here representing such a community as ours. The outpour of support that we have shown and the willingness to come together during these very troubling times is something that we all should be proud of. With these troubling times, we also have revisionists trying to change our history and our path to the future. For those people who are trying to erase history, I say to you, history is here for us to learn. We need to know where we came from to know where we are going. That is why we need to continue to come together, stay strong as a community. Now more than ever, it is important to make sure our voices are heard as a community. I'm proud of the work that has been done by everybody involved and the people who keep joining the cause. It's time for revisionists to hear us roar. Let's continue to stay loud and stay heard. Growing up in an Italian family, as most of us have, we heard the word respect on a daily basis. That word has been engraved in our minds. 
we ask Mayor Lightfoot to restore respect. Even though we didn't agree with the, we didn't agree with the temporary removal of the statues, we understood the reason to protect the men and women who protect us. We were optimistic that the mayor would keep her word and place the statues back. Mayor Lightfoot, we feel the time is now. Please be a woman of your word and return the statues to their places. Please make sure we keep our heritage alive and make sure we stand up for what we believe in and what is ours. Happy Columbus Day, everybody. Hey, 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 hey. Keep it positive. Keep it positive. Okay. It's enough out of you. I'd like to bring to the podium right now a gentleman who has been so supportive of our Italian-American community, specifically on, uh, particularly on Taylor Street. As, as you know, we put on our Taylor Street uh, Italian Festival uh, each year. And uh, this is the gentleman who uh, helps make it happen. And he's been very generous to us and very accommodating. And we'd like to thank and welcome to the podium Alderman Jason Irvin. Thank you to uh, Ron and uh, Sergio for the uh, introduction. And again, it's always good, and I celebrate the diversity of this great ward that we have on the west side of Chicago. And one of the focal points that I look forward to that I missed this year was the Taylor Street Festival. As you all can see, I like to do some uh, good eating here, and it's one of my favorite festivals in the community. But again, let's give Ron a hand for all the work that he's done to preserve the festival, the work at the Italian American Sports Hall of Fame, and overall in our community. And I also want to thank the uh, Little Italy Neighborhood Community Association and Joe Esposito and his team for always working with the community and trying to solve challenges that we face. So again, while we may have some differences of opinion, we all have an opportunity to sit down and have a conversation. So I look forward to continuing the conversation around this area and especially around, this, around the statue. While people may have different opinions, uh, the way that it was done was not proper, in my opinion. We're going to continue to work to find an equitable solution for all of us that we all can live with and celebrate the heritage, not just of the Italian culture, but all of the cultures that make this war the great place that it is. Thank you, and God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much, Alderman. I'd also at this time like to bring to the microphone another gentleman who has been extremely supportive of us, uh, member of the City Council, 38th Ward Alderman, Nick Sposato. Thank you, Ron. Sorry, everybody, I'm, I'm down below. I used to be the guy in the back, now I'm the guy in the front all the time. But I just want to thank everybody for coming out. I, I know we said to be proud and positive, and it, this is definitely a positive event uh, and proud event, but we are under attack, people, okay? The lefty loons are coming after everything we stand for, so. Um, so, yeah. So, so um, let's just, you know, continue to stay proud and positive. Let's work together, uh, get things figured out. Uh, one of our main thing was the, the protection of our police officers when this whole thing happened. You saw what happened to them. It was terrible, disgusting. Um, thank them for everything they did. They were certainly under attack. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I'm 62 years old, so you know I, I, I know I was never in war, but it was that certainly was a war type situation. But uh, thank you all for coming out. Uh, once again, stay proud and positive. And thanks, thank you very much to our Chicago police officers for everything you guys do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alderman. We'd like to bring to the podium another member of the City Council who has not only been very supportive of, uh, of uh, our Italian-American community, but also particularly supportive of uh, our National Italian-American Sports Hall of Fame, always there for us, and our past president who we, put, uh, we lost uh, just over a year ago, George Randazzo, Alderman Walter Burnett.
Buongiorno, come stai? Bene, bene. So it gives me a great honor and pleasure to be here today. I want to thank the Italian American community for their contributions that you have made to the city of Chicago. You know, I've always wondered, I grew up around Italians. Uh, actually, my father was a truck driver for the city for many years, and he hung around a lot of Italian guys, you know, Nick LaCoco, and he hung around uh, the Caruso's, and all these people, he would bring these nice cookies home every Christmas. <laughs> You know, and I always wondered why we were so cool. And then, you know, I grew up and I get cool with Italians. And working in George Dunn's organization, I hung around Frank Bruno and Ned Benigno, you know. And, and then now my kid, my son, Walter Jr., hangs around Pas Pasquale and Chrissy Spina Jr. And I'm like, why are we so attracted to Italians? Then I did my DNA, and I got a percentage of Italian. <laughs> Who would have ever thought? <laughs> so, like my, uh, my mentor and good friend, Jesse Brianco, Jesse White that is, would always say, the Italian would always give us love and we give it back to the goals, to the goals. Grazie, grazie. Nicely done. <laughs> wow. It was awesome. Why don't you just take over for me, Alderman? That was freaking good. That was good. We'd like to, uh, first of all, we'd like to thank Alderman Ed Burke for being here. Thank you so much, sir. Your support to our Italian American community has always been wonderful. And can that guy sing some songs? I just know personally. And play the piano. We'd like to bring to the podium also another member, a beloved member of our city council with a rich history here in Chicago and with our Italian American community. Please welcome Alderman Patrick Daly Thompson. Thank you, Ron. Take this off, I'm sorry. Thank you, Ron. It's an honor to be here and to Sergio and to all of you here celebrating our Italian heritage today. As uh, Ron mentioned, I, uh, my family has been involved in public service here for a long time, but many people think I'm all Irish. Uh, I am a quarter Italian. Today I'm here representing my grandma, Quentin Dinocenzo, from Capistrano. And I know there's discussions about statues and discussions about what's going on, but I think we, for me, I focus on celebrating our Italian heritage, celebrating what we do every year. And Columbus was a dreamer, a man of vision and courage, a man filled with a hope for a future and a mission to spread Christianity. We as Italians need to spread that meaning on this day, Columbus Day, and remember that. The dreams and opportunities that brought many of our family here and fought for this country, served for this country, and died for this country. And they, along with all the immigrant, other immigrant groups, make this country the greatest land in the world. So with that, I want to wish you all a happy Columbus Day, and we continue to celebrate this every year, and I'm sure that the statues will be back. I'm sure the parade will be back next year, and we'll continue on as great, proud Americans of Italian descent. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you so much, Alderman. And again, it's going to take a big fight, not only from us, but also uh, from our representatives and city council. So we'll be looking to you for that leadership and that support, and we will return that support. And believe me, it's coming from our community, and thank you. We'd like to bring to the podium right now another good friend of ours, the 8th District State Representative, LaShawn Ford. Oh, he just had an emergency, but I tell you what, a really good guy, a big supporter of ours as well. Let's bring to the podium now our Deputy Secretary of State, Tom Benigno, on behalf of Jesse White. Thank you, everyone. I've been sitting down because I've had three back operations. I should have let an Italian operate. <laughs> Hi, my name, uh, good morning everyone, my name is Tom Lenigno, and I am the Deputy Secretary of State, and on behalf of Jesse White, my friend and my mentor, and on a, because I'm a very proud Italian American, I am honored to be here today. As you all know, when Columbus Day was established as a holiday, it was not only to celebrate the Italian explorer, 
It was to commemorate the contributions of Italian Americans to this great country. Becoming a federal celebration in 1934, and then a federal holiday in 1968, that day meant something special to Italians. It meant that after decades of hard work, sacrifice, and service, Italian Americans had truly become an integral part of the tapestry we call America. We made it. We were appreciated. And while the historic contributions of Christopher Columbus are being reanalyzed and reassessed today, let us never forget one simple fact. Americans continue to bring great depth and dimension to American life and to the overall American experience. Our families, our skills, our love for this nation should never be denied or taken for granted. I am proud of my Italian heritage, I am proud of my Italian American family, and I am proud of this community today and every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for being here. At this time, I'd like to bring a, a very special guest. We appreciate her being here. She's the president and CEO of the DuSable Museum. Please welcome Perry Ermer. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it is such an honor to be here with you today, an honor and a pleasure. Uh, unfortunately, Rep. Ford, Representative LaShawn Ford had to leave, but we stood together earlier this week with my dear friend Louis Rago. Where is Louis? I've been looking for you all morning. Uh, and also in the memory of our dear, dear friend and, and supporter, Dom DeFrisco. And Pasquale, God bless you and your family. I know you're carrying on his legacy, and we appreciate that. Nobody like him. Just nobody like him. God rest his soul. So I'm, uh, I'm president and CEO of the DuSable Museum of African American History. And we've got a lot in common, right? Because our history has often been distorted, often been left out. And the reason Rep. Ford and, and Louie and others uh, stood together at the DuSable Museum earlier this week was to announce a new bill for teaching American history in full so that so that every community who contributed to the greatness of this nation from the backs of slave labor to your brave Italian Americans. Uh, we want our children to hear about everybody's history because everybody is part and parcel of this American history and none can be separated from the main, otherwise the story is not told in full, right? So I'm not, I'm not here to defend Columbus. You don't need me to do that. I am here to defend history and every child's right to learn the full, true, complete history told by the people from the communities who made these wonderful contributions. So I, I, I applaud you. I, I really welcome our partnership because, listen, we are so divided right now in this nation. It's pathetic. It's sad. It's discouraging, but what makes me hopeful are events like these that are going to allow us to make good history together. Together. And I, I applaud Representative Ford for introducing this American History Bill in the state legislature. I know it's going to be successful because it is going to include not just African American history, not just Jewish history, not just Native American history, but Italian American history yes. and LGBTQ and Latinx history, all of which forms this great fabric of America and all of us deserve to know everyone's story, right? So thank you, God bless. Alderman uh, D. Bernetto, I, I didn't know, but I have uh, a whole new, yeah, yes, right, Bernetti, okay. I'm thinking Anthony D. Benedetto, you know, also a great Italian American. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. Louis, I don't see you, but I love you, God bless you, and uh, thank you so much for allowing me to be here with you this morning. Thank you.
Thank you so much, my dear. Those are beautiful words. God bless you and your organization. And we as an organization and community look forward to working with you to make the uh, history come alive. Thank you so much. I would also like to uh, recognize Commissioner Pete DiCiani. Thank you for being here, former mayor of Elmhurst. Sam Amaranti, thank you. The Gulo family, Dominic Gambino, Dominic Stramalia, all these leaders. Judge Lisa Marino, thank you for being here. Um, we also have our Columbus Day Queen. My dear, it was last year, right? Right? Natalie DiCiani, thank you so much for being here. I think from 2018, a member of the court, is Elisabetta Bifedo is here somewhere. There she is. Thank you so much. We also have uh, right here our Queen Isabella is Nina Colucci this year. And our very brave Christopher Columbus, who would wear that costume today, Mr. Max DeVito. Each year, uh, Mr. Anthony Rago uh, has been joining Dominic DeFrisco at the, uh, at the booth announcing, and so I've asked him to come up to say a few words just to keep the tradition of you at the microphone alive. Anthony? Thank you. I'm uh, proud to be here, proud to be here with all of you at this rally. Thank you very much for, for showing up and showing your support. I jotted down a few notes because I know Dominic would would also like to keep it positive against all the revisionist history that's been going on and, and uh, revisionist uh, uh, remarks about Columbus. So uh, I wanted to keep it kind of simple and let you know why we all celebrate. And I hope to see you all next year on State Street when we celebrate the parade again. We celebrate Columbus for the bravery of sailing across the Atlantic Ocean in a small ship with limited navigation tools. We celebrate Columbus because we are intelligent enough to know that it was impossible to transport 3,000 natives to Europe on four voyages when his ships were only big enough to hold 50 people. We celebrate Columbus for his defense of the indigenous people. The defense of the indigenous people he encountered as he sentenced to death two Spaniards for their mistreatment of those natives. We celebrate Columbus because he never owned a slave, period. And we celebrate today especially because it is the anniversary of the exact day, October 12, 1492, that Columbus landed in the New World, opening the doors for millions of immigrants from all over the world, including all of our ancestors, to arrive and contribute to what eventually became this great society, or as Dominic DeFrisco used to call, this mosaic known as the United States of America. Yes. America, also another fine Italian name. And we celebrate Columbus because when our ancestors came here, they were mistreated themselves. They were not automatically welcomed. They endured racism and prejudice. But Christopher Columbus was Italian, and was looked upon by the world for over 400 years as a hero. And in that way, he helped legitimize the Italian immigrants. Christopher Columbus became the example by which our ancestors could become accepted. We owe it to them, we owe it to the truth, and we owe it to ourselves to continue celebrating. Happy Columbus Day, everybody. Thank you. And we do owe a uh, debt of gratitude to the entire Rago family. Of course, Lou Rago, who's been our, our parade marshal uh, almost forever. Um, Anthony Rago, Joe Rago, the young lady who sang the national anthem, Gabriella Rago. So thank you to the Rago family for being such a part of this. You heard us speak about Mr. Dominic DeFrisco on, on several occasions today. So his, he's here in spirit, and he's here in the form of his grandson, Mr. Pasquale Gianni, please come to the microphone. I have a set of keys here, and it says Calabria on the keychain if you lost it. I may just keep it.
Hi, everybody, and uh, thank you, Ron. I'm still fighting back the, uh, the tears from that beautiful tribute uh, to my grandfather. Uh, I, I do have a little bone to pick with you, though, for making me follow all these terrific speakers <laughs> to the microphone. Now I have a, a great task to, uh, to hold to. Uh, we're here today to celebrate, obviously, our, our beloved holiday, but also uh, our heritage. But I would also be remiss if I didn't point out I'm here as well as a proud representative of the Teamsters Union. And organized labor helped uplift so many Italians that helped build this country. Teamster proud. Marcus Garvey once said that a people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. This holiday is a wonderful manifestation of our roots in this sweet land of liberty. Our tentacles spread so far and wide in this great city and nation that our Italian culture has seeped its way into much of what makes America what it is. Our cuisine, our art, our sport, our fashion, our architecture and design, to name a few, have irrevocably and inextricably shaped the American way of life and landscape. It wasn't always this way, though. Our people fought and clawed their way to Americanness. Anglo-Saxon majorities rejected our people and refused to accept them. But without question, our people have made tremendous strides. There's little doubt, though, that anti-Italianism is still alive and well. There is a silver lining in all of this, though. Part of that is evidenced by what we're doing here today, what I'm witnessing right in front of my very eyes. Italian Americans have been called to action. We have great reason to celebrate our culture and our contributions, and yes, we even have great reason to celebrate Christopher Columbus. <clears throat> Although they say I'm an old soul, I still occupy a, a young man's body. So <laughs> let's, let's be clear that the future of our community will hinge on our ability to engage young people, to keep their heritage alive, and to educate them so that they learn about the great wonders and contributions of our people. I meet young folks today that claim to be of Italian origin. Uh, I ask them, where in Italy did their ancestors come from? They couldn't tell you. I ask them what they love about being Italian, and they pivot the conversation to talking about the Sopranos. <laughs> the upshot here is that we have a great educational mission. I'm certainly biased, but teaching our youth where they came from should never go out of style. And boy, do we have so much greatness to highlight. I make mention of uh, our, our friends in the Greek community, for example. I don't know a third, even fourth generation Greek that doesn't speak the language and carry with them an abiding pride and appreciation for where they came from. Uh, and they'll be the first to tell you that the Greeks invented democracy. These are all the things we should be doing and instilling in our children and grandchildren. My grandfather, uh, Dominic DeFrisco, did have a great saying. America is not a melting pot but it's a beautiful mosaic. A melting pot suggests homogeny and the blending together to mask our various cultures, whereas a mosaic comprised of the vibrant colors representing the multi-ethnic and racial fabric of the American project is a representation of what we're all about. So I say to you, those colors should remain, not be suppressed, just as we shall continue to water the roots of our cherished heritage. And be assured, we won't rest until the American apple pie tastes a little more like cannoli. <laughs> so today, and every second Monday in October, for the remainder of the existence of man, the colors green, white, and red on that mosaic will shine just a little bit brighter.
All of us here today will ensure that to be so. In closing, grazie a tutti, viva Cristoforo Colombo, and the ever-enduring Italian spirit will guide us in good times and bad to a better and brighter future. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in charge of my dessert program. On my Thank you. I just told him he's in charge of my dessert program and my restaurants. Who said all men are created equal? Thomas Jefferson, right? So Thomas Jefferson did say that, but if you check your history, he borrowed it from an Italian patriot. Filippo Mazzei said all men are created equal. An Italian said it first here in America. Italian Americans have supported our government, the development of this great country. And real quick, there's a bunch of people, and you know what? Uh, the great Dominic de Frisco, again, he gave us all our words of wisdom. And as I do these speaking things now and then, he said, uh, be succinct, cut it short, and uh, be prepared to upset all those that you forget to mention. So I'm already waiting to check out my texts and my emails. I do the best I can. But you know what? <clears throat> Unsung heroes, real quick. <clears throat> Pardon me. Sergio mentioned them before, but the gentlemen and the gentlewomen who've been meeting here every Sunday since the statue is gone. People in this neighborhood. Carlo Vanilla. Always there. Always there. Cologido, Bucato, did the statue always here. Frank DePero, Frank Concialdi, Frank De Paolo and Madia. There's so many of them that, that should be announced. And, and, the, and the ladies. Well, help me. See, I told you. Help me out here. I'm getting there, Esposito. <laughs> Joe Esposito, who is the president of the Little Italy Chicago Neighborhood Association here on Taylor Street. Hey, Butch. All the guys from, all the people from ARSA who's here. All the people, the Old Neighborhood Italian American uh, Club is here. There's so many organizations I'd like to mention, so many I probably will forget, and I apologize, <laughs> please. Um, the Knights are Columbus, I mean Knights of Columbus, and we're going to talk about them in a second. So, um, at this time, I'd like to bring up uh, the mayor of the city of Elmwood Park, who has always been on our reviewing stand, that Teamsters right there, uh, just a wonderful, amazing supporter uh, of our Italian American community, and a member. He his father goes back generations. Please welcome Angelo Skip Saviano. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. And also thank you and Joanne Serpico and your team for putting this together. It's, it's just absolutely marvelous. Give a, be a round of applause. It's a lot of work, believe me. As a mayor, I know. The, the logistics to put all this together takes a lot of work. You can't do it overnight. I've had the privilege of um, overseeing the uh, wreath lane ceremony for the last 20 years after the mass for the Order of Sons of Italy and Daughters of America. And it's really a privilege for me to be here today uh, to, to introduce some of those people. Columbus Day comes with a tradition perpetuated by generations, old organizations with great reverence and pride. I would like to thank one such organization who have been with us every year, and that is the Knights of Columbus. Thank you to the Knights. Each year after the Columbus Day Mass at the Shrine of Our Lady of Pompeii, we, we march down the street and lay a wreath in our, in, in our Italian Heritage Month here at the statue. Today we will lay the wreath just behind us at a 75-year-old monument that pays tribute to the war veterans of all ethnic groups. To make the presentation, the president of the Illinois and Wisconsin Lodge of the Orders and Sons of Daughters of Italians in America, an Italian-American war veteran, Paul Loparco. Paul? Doesn't work 
Okay. Uh, oh, wow, looking out at this crowd is uh, very satisfying, believe me. Uh, the Sons of Italy and Daughters of Italy are one of the largest Italian-American organizations in the United States. We go from the East Coast to the West Coast and the Midwest. Okay. Uh, listening to all these speeches, what I wrote down kind of is trivial, but here goes. Today we celebrate our Italian-American heritage by laying a wreath to honor an Italian sailor, diplomat, and explorer, Christopher Columbus. Italian Americans celebrate this as a day to honor our ancestors and all they have brought to American culture. We're also here to honor our Italian American veterans. As an Italian American of 100% heritage, I know the feeling that my parents and relatives went through <clears throat> during their immigration to this land. They came here to better themselves and to work. My father came here when he was 17 years old. My mother was born in America a week after my grandparents landed in Baltimore. <clears throat> they both moved to Chicago and acknowledged Chicago as their home. I was born in this city, raised in an Italian household, along with my three older sisters. We were not spoken to in Italian, nor were we taught the language. My father did not want us to be discriminated against as there was prejudicial discrimination against Italians in that day, and it still continues. My father learned to speak, read, and write English on his own. He experienced the discrimination against Italians during his youth here. Italian Americans have been poorly judged and have faced this even today. But as Americans, we have risen to the challenge and have an integral part of this city and nation. I was born here, raised here, educated here, and taught here, and lived here. I am proud to be an Italian American. I, like my father and uncles and cousins, are Italian-American veterans. We have all served our country. My father, like so many Italian-Americans, served in World War I and received his citizenship when he was discharged. He was proud to be an American. As a little boy, my mother and I saw my uncles leave Great Lakes Naval Station directly for the Pacific War. We didn't see them for three and a half years, but they survived. As we stand here today, we honor our heritage. Let us not forget the man who saw the way here and led the way for millions of Europeans, including many Italians, to the new land. His voyages opened sea lanes that are still in use 500 years later. We celebrate the man, Christopher Columbus. If it were not for his voyages and implementing of early settlements, we would most likely not be standing here today for the celebration. Again, I say we are proud to be Italian-Americans. Some of us are 100% Italian. Others are part Italian. Many of our families are not pure Italian, but when asked what nationality they are, they respond proudly, Italian. Our beliefs are similar. Our activities are similar. We are all proud American, Italian Americans. It has been a good life in America. It has been an honor to teach for 55 years and to serve in the Navy for 18. I would serve today, but as you can see, I'm a little over the draft age. Okay, thank you for listening, and God bless all Americans. Okay, thank you. So immediately following our presentation, we'll take this wreath. We ask the Knights of Columbus to con uh, converge at the, uh, there's a military monument honoring war veterans right here about 50 feet behind us. So we'll, we'll lay the wreath. We ask the Knights to surround for a photo there, if you guys wouldn't mind. Thank you so much with, uh, with Paul. 
Um, also, Peter Pero, Dominic Candeloro, so many people who are fighting the fight every day about their Italian-American heritage. Thank you so much, Dr. Candeloro, for all you do. Um, another gentleman who is always with us, Phil Mercatale, who's always uh, professing his heritage. And he's not with us tonight because his grandmother, Anna Maria Scuraffa, born on Taylor, at, on Taylor and May right here, passed away just a few hours ago on Columbus Day. Yes. So in her honor, and in the honor of George Randazzo, Dominic DeFrisco, Anthony Fernelli, so many leaders, so many members of our community that we've lost, a moment of silence in their honor and in their memory. Thank you. Round of applause, please, for them. So one last bit of housekeeping. Once again, if you'd like to be in our parade, uh, we have flags, we have masks, all the red, white, and green ones, T-shirts that say uh, Pride and po Proud and Positive Columbus Day shirts. Grab, the, uh, grab them over there at the Joint Civic Committee uh, tent. Uh, we'd also like to thank everybody here. Tom Benigno, our Lieutenant uh, Secretary of State, who's also running for Mayor of Norwich. Thank you, President of Norwich. Good luck to you, sir. Any Italian-American uh, we can support, we, we'd love to be behind. Um, if you're going to be part of our parade, again, it's going to take off from Lexington. If you'd like to see it, you could stand here, or you can go down. The, ra the route is Lexington to Racine, Racine to Taylor. We're going to come proudly come down Taylor Street, go to Loomis, and it's going to end right here. Also want to make sure that uh, you put your hazards on and uh, be very, very careful. Uh, Rich? I just want to close with a chance. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rich Pellegrino. Thank you all for being here. Join with me when I make this statement answer this is what america looks like tell me what america looks like tell me what america looks like tell me what america looks like remember life liberty and the pursuit of happiness did you say pursuit all right once again i want to thank you all so much um, we have posters, these posters there, if you want to get a poster for free right at the tent there to, for Proud and Positive uh, Celebrate Italian Heritage Month, we'd like to close. Please, everyone join in Johnny Maggio singing God Bless America. Thank you so much, and happy Columbus Day. God bless America. Love of my love, stand beside her and guide through the night with the lights from above, from the mountains to the prairie to the ocean, wide with Oh, oh, oh.